Howdy folks, good afternoon. Here's a second video today based at Stump Pass Beach State Park. And once again, it's still the 22nd of September. And from yesterday, as I was discussing, looking at this estuary, the Lemon Bay, it's rather calm right now. Calmer than what it even was yesterday. But as part of the video I was mentioning yesterday, we talked about the mangroves, and here we have that excellent example of black mangroves. You see those projections coming from the ground? Those are your famous pneumatophores, which is basically just another way of saying air breathing. Think of it this way. The pneumatophores, or those roots, essentially act as a snorkel for the black mangrove itself. How it's, that's how it's able to receive its carbon dioxide. And that's where the oxygen is also released as well. And that's how they're able to take in their nutrients and water as well. So it's just it's really cool to think about what these projections provide and oftentimes the salt is excreted from these pneumatophores as opposed to taking them in like red mangroves so oftentimes this is where you'll find a lot of wildlife whether it be crabs minnows and among others, but those are some of your more common ones. But yeah, this is the black mangrove. So yeah, these are the pneumatophores, and then this is the actual mangrove itself, right here. Okay, so moving on. So as I was also mentioning in my video yesterday, when we were pointing out these uh, ragged sea hares, there was something... I forgot to mention with you guys. So as I was, you know, inspecting them today and the water is perfectly clear, they have a defense mechanism. So if you actually touch them, let me see if, if, if the ragged sea hare does it. I'm just basically tapping him. Or like if I pick them up, maybe. Hmm, that one doesn't want to do it. Hmm. They're not doing it. But I noticed if you touch them in a particular way, they'll actually produce an ink that comes from their body. It's like a purple ink. It's basically a way to stun and confuse any of the offenders that might be going after it. But since I was basically just lightly tapping them, they didn't really feel as threatened. But that is a defense mechanism that they have. They produce an ink, very similar to some of our octopus species as well. They produce that ink. But theirs is like a purple. It's actually really cool, by the way. And so another plant that I wanted to point out to you guys, while I was uh, walking through We've, uh, we've actually got ourselves some sea purslane. I have actually talked about this plant before. It's also known as the sea pickle. Now, why it's called that is the fact that since these are edible, especially the leaves, they have a very salty flavor associated. Not only that, but they actually pack a little bit of water. Personally, 
I can't like legally without a permit eat too much of these just because it's a state park but I'm gonna take just a little bite and yeah it does have that salty flavor on the leaf but rest assured I'll actually put it back along in the soil so that there's a chance for regrowth and actually propagation for sea purslane is quite simple you can cut off a stem and basically replant it and thus it's able to grow from there and what's often neat too if you come at the right time during particular months of the year they actually produce these uh purple flowers they're actually really cool to look at which typically have up to four to five petals they're just very small and usually they can grow as high as 26 inches so it's a little over two feet but that's the sea purslane also known as the sea pickle but yeah if you're ever in a survival situation in a coastal area if you need just a little bit of hydration and just a little bit of salt, that's absolutely perfect to help you. So the last plant that I wanted to point out here is, well, it's already labeled, but I'm just going to mention about it anyways. We've got the C. oxi daisy. So it's another species of daisy. And they'll usually be in coastal habitats, whether it be beaches, dunes, or even mangroves. And they're, they're very tolerant of drought and even salt water. So they're a very versatile plant. These are one of the many, or one of the few plants that can actually survive in these adverse conditions. But we're already past that time where they will flower. But they are actually quite pretty to look at. They kind of remind you of looking at sort of like a mini sunflower. But rest assured, it's not in direct relation with the sunflower. But yeah, typically the leaves themselves, they kind of have like a greenish white color associated. And as you can see, they grow probably up to my waist. So you figure three or so feet. And now you can't go wrong with stump pass. And like today, the water is so clear. It's amazing. And not only that, but the water is also very calm. So it makes it very ideal for paddle boarding, snorkeling, or even kayaking too. So I just look forward to when it actually cools down a little bit because when that happens that's when I can actually start doing some more kayaking and videos associated with that so I just I really look forward to when that time comes so all right you guys hope you learned something of value regarding some of our native flora and fauna found at Stump Pass Beach State Park and also want to owe my thanks to the rangers that work out here to ensure the protection of this habitat as well as the volunteers so thank you guys so hope you all enjoy your wednesday and once again journey on a journey is outwards take care folks see ya